Hi there, Dr. Rajiv Iyer here from IMG Secrets, coming with the experience of guiding hundreds of international medical graduates like you from more than 50 countries. In this video, I'm going to tell you how to successfully apply for a clinical fellowship in the USA as an IMG. And let's do this together. When you think of a clinical fellowship, this is a super specialization degree. So bottom line is you've finished your medical school or medical college, then you have done your PG training in your home country, and now you want to specialize in something else. And this is when you think of applying for a clinical fellowship. So obviously the basic requirements, your medical college must be recognized by WHO and must have a sponsor note from the ECFMG. Ideally, you, you should have your full license, but if you're still in training, that is still fine. You could apply to the clinical fellowship. And a ideal candidate would have had a few years of experience to show that they actually are aligned with the fellowship they are applying to. Now, for the purpose of this video, when I'm talking about applying for clinical fellowships, I'm going to say you must have your USMLE step one, step two CK, your English proficiency exam OET, and then you must be ECFMG certified. Are there any exceptions? Yes, but that's a completely separate topic and we would not get there. So once you have all these requirements, including your ECFMG certification, this is when you would start looking for a fellowship opportunity. Now the fellowship application in the US can take various different paths. The most common route of applying is through ERAS. And unfortunately, you as an IMG would not be eligible to apply through ERAS because there are a lot of roadblocks that the system would stop you from proceeding further. However, we have had successful in candidates moving through the San Francisco match, which I encourage you to explore if you think you are eligible to one of those fellowships in that match. Of course, there are other systems to apply and that depends on individual specializations. But for the most part, you can always send a cold email to the program director. However, you must be extremely careful here to be very professional, very cautious in the way you approach it. Now, once you identify a fellowship based on your specialization, and this could be an accredited fellowship or a non-accredited fellowship, it does not matter. But for most IMGs, they tend to get more successful with a non-accredited fellowship. So once you identify what you're applying to, you would prepare your application. And this consists of a fantastic CV, professionally made, highlighting all your skills, a nice cover letter, unless they specifically ask for a personal statement. If it's a cover letter, we tend to stick to two pages. If it's a personal statement, we tend to stick to one page. And then you would need strong letters of recommendation and you would submit your application with your CV, cover letter, your ECFMG certification and all the necessary documents to the program director. Once they like you as a candidate, they would call you for an interview which is going to be virtual. The interview just tests the soft skills. They're looking at your communication skills. Are you going to be a good fit to the program? And uh, subsequently, if they like you as a candidate, congratulations, they would send you an offer of acceptance. This follows two important parts. So one is your visa application. The second is obtaining a training license. For the most part, most fellowships want to sponsor a J-1 visa, mainly because the amount of paper work and the amount of expense for the hospital is pretty less. However, if you think you're an outstanding candidate, you have completed USMLE step three, then you can always push for an H-1B. From your standpoint, the best visa is going to be an H-1B than a J-1 because J-1 comes with a lot of restrictions. And once you have this, then you would apply for all the paperwork for your visa at the US Embassy in your home country, and then you will have your H-1B stamped on your passport. Subsequently, or rather simultaneously, Simultaneously, you would also be applying for a training license in that particular state where you're going to start your clinical fellowship. And ideally, by the time you're ready to start your clinical fellowship, you would have your H-1B, you would have traveled to the US, and then you would have your training license. All that will help you start your fellowship at the previously designated timeline without any delays. When candidates take our help for the full package, I tell them visa is not something they need to stress about at this stage because the hospital will help with all the paperwork. Now, do they guarantee that you'll get a visa? They cannot and they do not but they support with all the necessary paperwork. And so for the training license, because most things are beyond the control of the hospitals. Now that you know how to apply for a fellowship, 
I encourage you to check this video out where I've talked about the alternate entry path program. Now, if you think you're an outstanding candidate who can potentially bypass a residency and become a part of the US healthcare system, then this video is exactly for you. Of course, if this is a lot of information and you're unable to proceed with the application, you can always reach out to us at imgsecrets.com, book an appointment with me or one of our experts, and we shall be more than happy to guide you with your application as we have done for many other candidates. Any questions, do post in the comments below. Take care, stay safe. I will talk to you soon.